Hello, friends. Today, we're diving into the absolutely sensational and miraculous survival story of Aaron Ralston. But first, did you know about the eerie dream that Aaron had? Picture this. He envisioned himself with only half of his right arm, joyfully playing with a child. Intrigued? What exactly happened to Aaron Ralston? Who is he? Stay tuned as we unravel the incredible details of his jaw-dropping journey to survival. Aaron Ralston was born on October 27, 1975, in Marion, Ohio. He was a bright and motivated individual from a young age. He attended Carnegie Mellon University, where he graduated with degrees in mechanical engineering and French, with a minor in piano. After college, he briefly worked as a mechanical engineer at Intel in Albuquerque, New Mexico. However, his love for the outdoors prompted him to leave his desk job and move to Aspen, Colorado, where he pursued a life of adventure as an outdoor guide and continued his passion for climbing. The defining moment of Aaron Ralston's life occurred in April 2003. Aaron Ralston traveled to southeastern Utah to explore Canyonlands National Park on April 25, 2003. He slept in his truck that night, and at 9.15 a.m. the next morning, a beautiful, sunny Saturday, he rode his bicycle 15 miles to Blue John Canyon, an 11-mile-long gorge that in some places measures just three feet wide. The 27-year-old locked his bike and walked toward the canyon's opening. At around 2.45 p.m., as he descended into the canyon, an 800-pound boulder dislodged, crushing and trapping his right forearm against the canyon wall. Ralston was also trapped 100 feet below the desert surface and 20 miles away from the nearest paved road. To make matters worse, he hadn't told anyone about his climbing plans, and he didn't have any way to signal for help. He inventoried his provisions, two burritos, some candy bar crumbs, and a bottle of water. For five days, Ralston rationed the small amount of food and water he had with him. He attempted to chip away at the boulder with his pocket knife and tried to rig a pulley system to move the boulder, but all attempts failed. As time wore on, he realized that his chances of being rescued were slim, given that nobody knew his exact location. From the beginning, the idea of amputating his own arm crossed his mind. He tested the feasibility by applying tourniquets and making shallow cuts with his knife to gauge its sharpness. However, he faced the daunting realization that cutting through bone with his inadequate multi-tool, which he joked was the sort of item you might receive as a free add-on with a $15 flashlight, seemed nearly impossible. Overcome with despair and nearing delirium, Aaron Ralston came to terms with what he believed was his impending death. With the blunt tools at his disposal, he etched his name, birth date, and what he thought would be his death date into the canyon wall, along with the letters RIP. In his final moments of solitude, he recorded farewell messages to his family on a video camera and attempted to rest. That night, as he drifted in and out of consciousness, Aaron Ralston dreamt of himself, with only half his right arm, playing with a child. A waking, he believed the dream was a sign that he would survive and that he would have a family. More determined than ever, he threw himself into survival. Aaron Ralston's vision of a future family sparked a crucial realization. He didn't need to see through his bones. He could break them. Facing dehydration and certain death, Ralston came to a dire conclusion on the fifth day, to amputate his own arm and escape. Utilizing the leverage of his trapped arm, he successfully snapped both his ulna and radius. Once his bones were broken, he crafted a tourniquet from the tubing of his camelback and completely cut off his blood circulation. This enabled him to use a blunt two-inch knife to slice through his skin and muscle and a pair of pliers to sever his tendons. Ralston saved cutting his arteries for last, aware that time would be critically short once he did. The entire process took an hour, during which Ralston lost 25% of his blood volume. High on adrenaline, 
Ralston climbed out of the slot canyon, rappelled down a 65-foot sheer cliff, and hiked six of the eight miles back to his car, all while dehydrated, losing blood, and one-handed. Six miles into his hike, he met a family from the Netherlands who had been hiking in the canyon. They gave him Oreos and water and contacted the authorities. Four hours after amputating his arm, Aaron Ralston was rescued by medics. They believed that the timing could not have been more perfect. Had Ralston amputated his arm any sooner, he likely would have bled to death. And had he waited any longer, he probably would have died in the canyon. The arm was cremated and returned to Ralston. Six months later, on his 28th birthday, he returned to the slot canyon and scattered the ashes there. Ralston's survival story became a sensation, highlighting not only the dangers of solo adventuring without proper preparation, but also the incredible resilience and determination of the human spirit. His memoir, Between a Rock and a Hard Place, detailed his ordeal and reflections on how he came to terms with his life-altering experience. The story was later adapted into the Oscar-nominated film 127 Hours, directed by Danny Boyle and starring James Franco as Ralston. Ralston's ordeal brought him fame, but it also imparted a lesson on the importance of self-reliance and the indomitable will to survive. Despite his severe injury, he continued to pursue outdoor adventures and became a motivational speaker, sharing his story to inspire others with his message of resilience, hope, and the power of life choices. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe and share our channel. Please hit the bell icon to receive notification of our new videos. We love to hear from our viewers, so please comment and let us know how you feel about our stories. Thank you.